I'm Mansfield Frazier. I'm a uh, journalist by profession, but I also manage the vineyard and winery of Chateau Huff, which is part of our nonprofit neighborhood solutions. The history of the Sidway Bridge is kind of complicated. When it was first built around 1905, 1906, the two communities, the one that we're in on the north side of the bridge, was a Jewish Hungarian community, and the one on the south side of the bridge was a Polish community, and they wanted to find a way to connect. So they petitioned the city to build a bridge. That bridge was actually torn down, and the one you see now was built in the 30s. It did the job it was expected to do for a while, but the demographics of the neighborhood, the North, the Kinsman neighborhood, changed and became predominantly black. When forced busing came along, kids were using this bridge to cross over to go to a school in the uh, Polish neighborhood. Some of the people didn't like that. So at the time of the Huff Uprising, somebody took some of the planks off of the bridge and then set the other parts on fire. And the city decided not to rebuild it. During that decade, there were over 700 uprisings in black communities across the United States. What had happened is that the Civil Rights Movement had started in the early 60s and people felt it was stalling. We expected change to come quicker than what it did. And so it built up a lot of tension and frustration. So the fact that there was an uprising is not surprising at all. Uh, like I said, there were over 700 of them. The entire African American community was, was unheard. Even wealthy blacks still experience discrimination. So it wasn't just about poverty. We're a nation that's called ourselves a democracy, but actually we're a pigmentocracy. It's based off of race and skin color, and those same issues haunt us to the day that were prevalent back then. I was going through the same thing that most other minorities were, uh, microaggressions, the sense of betrayal of the civil rights movement that whites were not were not buying into the notion. I've been discriminated against severely at my employment, which kind of spun my world around. I was a certified welder. The fact was I was training people to promote past me. And when I questioned them about it, they just said, that's just the way it is. We don't put black people, boss and white people around. I just needed to change. Well, my wife and I started a nonprofit, Neighborhood Solutions, and we were training people about the best practices for people coming out of incarceration. Rather than just tell people how to help those coming out, we decided to do a project that would provide employment, and that was the goal. There's a halfway house about a quarter mile away, and we use residents from that halfway house to uh, help establish the venue. Our goal was to create paychecks, and you can't do that with urban farming. Not enough economy of scale. Grapes are different because they have a higher dollar value. That's why we, that's why we selected uh, a vineyard. We grow two types of grapes. The rows we're standing in are white grapes but we also grow red grapes and uh, the other rows, and they yield a great crop every year. It takes three or four years before you get a crop of grapes. After we started getting a harvest of grapes, we wanted to open the winery, so we converted the bio cellar to a winery. Starting next month, these plants will start, uh, will be pruned, they'll be cut down, all of this will be cut down and we will start the growing process over again. And in September, we uh, harvest the grapes and we take them inside the winery and start the process of uh, crushing them and making wine out of them. Once the generation that lived through the Huff Uprising 
passes. I'd like to change the story so when people think of Huff, they think of a winery and a vineyard rather than the uprising. This is about improving our neighborhood, making it a friendly place, making it a place that people will decide they want to live in. Can't get over the uprising as part of the history, but what uh, institutions, particularly banking institutions do, is they use the story of the uprising to perpetuate redlining. So we want to change that. So as long as they're focusing on the uprising, that's why it took so long for housing to start, and uh, new homes to start being built because of the history of the uprising. So yes, we want to acknowledge that history without it impacting negatively on the community.